Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. We are the cornerstone of security in the Southeast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security I'm your host, Rick Strawn, the president of Paradigm Security Services. We are excited to be with you today on Business Radio X. We're broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio, located in the beautiful Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel in Duluth, Georgia. In addition to Paradigm Security Services, this show is also brought to you by Sosby's Garage and the Mana Scholarship Fund. On every show, we feature businesses and organizations in the Atlanta area, especially those that serve Gwinnett County. And a lot of times on the people and the politicians and uh, the, just the people that give back to the community. While on every show, as we feature these uh, businesses, we understand that all businesses have security concerns, but not all are about physical security. And we'll touch on that and other related aspects of security, the other as we go through the course of our show. Our guest today, I am very glad to have with me, Mr. Kelvin King. Now, I don't know, uh, I'm assuming a lot of you have heard about him. You're fixing to hear from him. And Kelvin is running for the U.S. Senate. Oh, how are you, Kelvin? I'm great. I'm great this morning. Thanks for having me. How are you? Hey, I am doing super. I, if I was doing any better, I never did understand it, but they said I'd have to be two people. I never did understand <laughs> that. But um, listen, um, tell us, a, I usually like to always start off by asking uh, the question of who people are. So let's just do that. Uh, who is Kelvin King? Tell me a little bit about yourself and where you come from, what you do, what what got you into, well, I think you're also in the construction business here. What got you into what you do? Well, first, I, I want to say that Kelvin, Kelvin King is a patriot. Uh, I was born in Mac uh, Macon, Georgia. I'm a Georgia-born and bred uh, native of Georgia, and uh, I got an appointment to the U.S. Air Force Academy um, after high school. Uh, there at the academy, I was an all-conference football player, had a great uh, career there at the academy, and after graduation, I went into the you know the real Air Force, as we say. I served as, as a contracting officer in the real Air Force. I did well in the Air Force. I was a, officer of the year. And uh, after my commitment, I went into corporate America. I always wanted to make my way into corporate America. Uh, worked a few jobs for some international firms and decided to start my own construction company nine years ago. Uh, I started it from scratch, from my bedroom and made enough money to move all the way down to my basement. Uh, and there my basement, there. <laughs> we expanded, and um, now I own a building near the Brave Stadium. That's fantastic. I know with Paradise, same thing. We kind of started from our dining room table and then built up to where we finished off the basement and moved to the basement. And now, we, <laughs> now we're out in, office, in an office here in Norcross. But, um, and thank you for your service, by the way. Uh, well, let me ask you, you're running for the U.S. Senate. I'm sure that you've never heard this question before. Why are you running for the U.S. Senate? I know, right? Well, you know, I, I can't sit and watch what's happening in our country right now. And the Senate role is an ideal role uh, for me to to help and serve our country again. Uh, you see this cancel culture that is taking control of America and it's putting our citizens at a, at, at a disadvantage and it's separating and dividing our citizens. And Absolutely. it's just not okay. So I want to step up to the plate. I want to help us. Uh, with truth. I want to help us with sound policy and, and, and sound business acumen and help us regain uh, a sense of calm and peace and unity in this country and get rid of this council culture. Well, I, I'm glad to hear the getting rid of the cancel culture. I know there's a lot of talk right now about the critical race theory and all that kind of stuff going into schools. And, you know, one of the things that I that stands out to me about you is that you're basically an epitome of the exact opposite of that, you know, just basically why that is just so not true. Uh, yes. You were born uh, to a teenage mother. Yes. Uh, you spent most of your childhood in a single-parent home. Yes. Uh, all of those things that you, I mean, you can't do that. You can't be an entrepreneur, and there's no way that you can have done what you've done because it's impossible. You were, you were born to fail. <laughs> but somehow uh, you and so many others that that I know personally in the business world 
uh, have just have said, you know, screw that. Uh, you know, I'm here and I'm going to do what I can do and I'm going to show you. Well, Rick, the theme of our campaign is we want to protect and preserve the American dream. The American dream is real and it's, it's accessible to every single American. Yes, uh, we don't all start in the same position. You know, some people have a, a better starting point than others. Sure. In my case, in my case, uh, yeah, I, I grew up in a, in a, in a tough household and a tough family and, um, you know, my, my father ended up leaving, but my grandmother stepped in to fill that void and I was able to stay focused and I was able to graduate high school with honors and get an appointment to the Air Force Academy and my, and my life trajectory changed. And I, I'm not saying that everyone is going to have the same path, but as long as we keep this American dream strong and real, everyone can achieve here in America. And we, we call it our three tenets. The three tenets to the American dream are freedom, opportunity, and American exceptionalism. And those are the things that's going to unite our country. And those are the things that, that I'm a representation of. So I'm able to speak with authenticity about how it's real. And there's a few things we need to be doing right now in America to make sure that we maintain the environment for the American dream. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Um, it, you know, the opportunity is there. What you, you know, the choices you make are your choices. Uh, right. there's, you know, and whether you make good choices or whether you make bad choices, there are consequences. And if you really are focused on, you know, doing the three things that you just pointed out, and especially with the opportunity, you know, it's there. And um, it's great to hear someone like you being willing to step up and get out there and voice those opinions. I mean, like like you say, it's it's the voice of a true patriot. Well, what are your thoughts on uh, the American economy right now? Well, Rick, I'm very concerned with the direction of the American economy. A few years ago, with the passage of the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, that was the start or continuation of a strong upward trend in our economy and our market. And you know, unfortunately, this 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 COVID situation really put a, a, a monkey through a monkey wrench in, into that growth. But the growth was solid because it was based on tax cuts, keeping our taxes low to create a thriving business environment and to encourage reinvestment into our economy. It was strong because we you know, had a semblance of control of government government spending. Right now, under the Biden administration, you see that con that spending is way out of control. There is and no that control. is not going to help our. No, it's, it's not going to help. I'm I'm afraid of inflation that is con that is starting to happen right now. And you know, after inflation, it's going to be uh, rates are going to rise, and it's going to be a stagnant economy. And that's not the direction that we want to take with our economy. We need to get back to to uh, free market principles and pro America economic policy. Well, I know in the business here, in, in the construction industry, we do a lot of uh, construction security. And one of the biggest challenges for us has been getting employees. Uh, as long as we're in competition with the federal government for workers, we come out on, as small businesses, we come out on the losing end. They can pay them more to sit at home than we can pay them to work which creates a problem. How has it been in from your side of the construction industry in dealing with all of your soups and all of your uh, people that come in there and your businesses? Yeah, we, yeah, we have superintendents, we have project managers, and we, and we have um, well over 100 subcontractors that uh, operate within our, our uh, umbrella. And yeah, it's difficult. It, it, was, it was starting to become a little bit more difficult in 19 only because the economy was so hot, but that's the that's the environment that you want to be in when it comes oh, absolutely. to um, um, finding employees and finding workers. Right now, the government is paying people to stay home. That's not fair. That's not right for small businesses, and it's turning the backs on the backbone of America, which is our small business world. Well, it's so killing us. Right, right now, our two our two senators, they don't have experience creating jobs. They don't know about the small business struggles. They don't know about uh, you know, the tax burden and tax policies and regulation burden. They don't know about uh, benefits and health care plans that you have to shop around every year because prices are, are going out of control. These are the things that we need someone in this seat to have uh, experience in. And right now, our two senators don't have uh, a lick of experience in, 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 those, in those categories. That's another reason why I'm running for experience, to make sure that we have smart, 
sound um, economic principles, pro-market capitalistic principles in this seat to represent Georgia? Well, I think that the, one of the biggest focuses and one of the biggest needs right now in our political system, and we're having an issue with getting that right now, is people that do have that perspective uh, on business, on entrepreneurship, on the just the working man. Excuse me. But, you know, getting these people in there, I know that um, the former president came from a background of business. That's where his focus was. And working from the perspective of a CEO, as you do with your company, uh, looking at the overall picture from a business perspective can only help. <laughs> excuse me. Um, excuse me. I'm getting quick off in the air. Um, when it comes down to uh, looking at the, the country overall, because as a U.S. senator, that's basically that's where you're going to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we're doing that, when, when it comes to national defense, you know, what is your view on our national defense right now, where we should be, what we should be doing? Well, well I'm, I'm proud of our military members and our, and our, and our veterans as well. Um, I'm also a veteran, and I think that we have to prioritize our national security. We have to prioritize our national defense. And right now, I'm very concerned with the leadership that's coming out of Washington and the messaging that's going to our troops and our warfighters. The messaging is not, let's be the greatest military on the planet. The messaging is more so, uh, let's be social justice warriors. Right now, in my old alma mater, the U.S. Air Force Academy, they're pushing CRT. At West Point, they're pushing CRT. These are divisive, theoretical uh, uh, teachings, and they don't have a place in our military right now. Our military should be, again, like I said, they should not be social justice warriors. They should be war fighters. Unit cohesion is the most important part of being an effective military organization. CRT does not enforce unit cohesion. It only breeds division, and it teaches oppression, the, the oppressor versus the oppressed. And that doesn't help with unit cohesion and good order and discipline. Totally, totally agree. Uh, you're looking at, uh, do you want a fighting force to defend our country or do you want someone out there to talk a lot about it? <laughs> you know, uh, personally, if, for me, it's put a gun in their hand and the thought in their mind that we are the baddest that there is, we can do whatever we need to do, but you're not going to have an effect on our country the way you're having an effect on a lot of the other countries. Yeah, yeah, our two current senators, they don't have military experience either. They don't have business experience nor military experience. They're not veterans. Georgia, they love their veterans. We have um, several military installations throughout the state of Georgia, and we need someone in this seat who can speak towards that, Absolutely. who can look at the big picture and see that, yeah, protecting our country, the physical security is important too. That's why I'm a big proponent of building a wall so that we can keep our war fighters away from our border and have them focus on war fighting uh, and let our uh, border patrol focus on border patrol. That's also why I want to make sure that our veterans are protected and taken care of as they transition from active duty to the civilian sector. That's going to encourage more Americans to step up to the plate and serve the country. So right now, people who are, are, are representing Georgia, they don't understand how all that works together. And that's another reason why we need someone like me to be in this, in this particular seat. Well, you know, you brought up the wall. And one of the biggest things, in fact, I was listening to it today. We've got the, all this, you know, crap about the but the uh, pandemic and all and the covid and all that you know we've talked a lot about the type of people that are coming over not not everybody and I, i'm well aware of that but there are a lot of people that are in there that have not our good interests in mind and then on top of it the everybody is so freaked out about covid on the media and all that kind of crap and then and and through the democrat party and yet they, they've got our borders totally open with over a million people coming in that haven't been tested. I mean, you know, where is the thought process going on here? Well, you know, the hypocrisy that we're seeing out of the Democratic Party right now. You know, first they say that uh, protecting our country by having border security and enforcement uh, is, is inhumane. 
but they allow thousands and thousands of unchecked, um, um, untracked people into our country, and we don't know their health conditions. That's inhumane. So there's a lot of hypocrisy that we're hearing out of the left that we, you know, we, we, we've got to stop. I think the American people are seeing that this is not the right direction that we want to go. The American people, and especially the people of Georgia, they're deciding to step up and they're going to make a better decision on who we put in these offices and in, in, in these in these races uh, come next 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 year. Well, the big focus, and I, I have to say this over and over and over, the big focus is not whether you're on the right or the left or the conservative or the uh, liberal or the Republican or the Democrat. It's what is your position on the issues that matter. Uh, and th- there are so many people that the only reason they take a position is because that's the position of their party. Well, excuse me, but this country is of people. It's up for the people. And it, the people that are put in there for the in the political arena are supposed to represent what is good for the country. Mm-hmm. And opening up our borders and bringing in the, the stuff that is coming in, that is not good for our country. And trying to keep everybody divided and split and angry at each other and focused on the color of their skin is absolutely absurd. So we yeah, got to have I think politi- it's insane. Yeah, we got to have it's politicians insane. in there that think differently. Right, it's it's insane and it's not healthy for the future of our country. And that's why the theme of my campaign is protecting and preserving the American dream. That's why we have the three tenets, freedom, opportunity, and American exceptionalism, because those are those are areas, those are tenets, those are beliefs and ideals that all Americans can get behind, that all Georgians can get behind, that the party, the Republican Party can unite behind. So we're, we're flying above all of the, of, of the silly arguments that, that's not uniting, uniting, that divides our country, you know, our country is one of the most diverse countries on the on, on the planet, and we were structured to be that way. We're, we're, we're called a melting pot. It's okay to have a diverse uh, uh, thought process, a, a diversity of thought. That's that's healthy. It brings great ideas. We want a heterogeneous uh, electorate. We want a, a heter- heterogeneous America because we get better ideas. We get we we, we get better advancement, better pro- pro- productivity, better prosperity. That's what America is all about. We've got to maintain and retain that type of environment by making sure our economy is strong, by making sure our national security is strong, by making sure that we protect our constitutional rights, like life, like the Second Amendment, like the First Amendment, which is currently under under attack by the Biden administration, by their collusion with with organizations like Facebook and and, 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 uh, Instagram and Twitter. They're actually censoring People's free speech right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you bring that up. You know, what are your thoughts on uh, what's going on with our constitutional rights in this country? Oh, oh, they're under attack. They're being eroded. We need we need politicians who are strong on the Constitution that understands that the Constitution was put in place to protect individual rights. We we have self determination in this country. You know, the the, the Constitution is is really to protect what God gave us. God gave us our right to life. God gave us our right to protect our lives. The constitution protects that. And I, and, and I think that, you know, that messaging ha- ha- has gotten manipulated or altered and it's causing destruction, it's causing division, and it's causing us to be against instead of with each other in America. Well, it seems like everything is focused on, you know, what the American people can do to protect it, to make sure that the government can work that the government has their rights, that the government, that the government, the government, the government, when somehow we've lost the idea that this whole thing of our nation and our founding fathers set up when the Constitution and our Bill of Rights, all of that was set up so that the government didn't affect the people. They protected them and did the few things that they were designed to do to make everything work better for the people. That has just totally been flipped on its head, at least from yeah, a lot of the politicians. It, it, it's, it, it's scary, Rick. It's scary. Uh, these are movements towards pro-government, and and they're disguising it as you know 
taking care of each other uh, when at the end of the day, the government should be protecting each other's individual rights. We don't want to move towards socialism. Socialism is just one stepping stone uh, towards communism. And Absolutely. you know, a lot, of, a lot of our young people, they're, they're not being taught that. You know, I, in fact, let me tell you a quick story. I was speaking with a group of young people recently about, uh, I brought up socialism, and they actually thought socialism meant being social with one another. Exactly. And, 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 and you know, that, that, that's a travesty. And, and we need people that are bold enough, uh, that are articulate enough to speak up and say, no, this is wrong. Uh, we are, are the United States of America. We are a, a constitutional republic. And each individual has human rights here in America. And the beauty of it is that you can succeed or fail on your own here in, here in America. And I think once we start realizing that, that that is really true freedom, that is really true liberty, I think that the messaging can be adjusted and people can be more encouraged. Right now, people are, are discouraged. Our message of freedom, opportunity, and American except, ex, exceptionalism is an encouraging me message. I think a lot of it has to do and with what you just got through saying with regarding to your example on socialism and thinking it was being social. <laughs> it has so much to do with what is being taught, or better yet, what is not being taught in our schools in the 1 through 12 it's coming up and then furthered in uh, in the education when you move past in your post high school education it's all that the fact that we've gotten away from teaching what the country is about mm -hmm. the truth about our country and we've all started just skimming over this a little bit and moving on into areas that are in the social justice end of it instead of just sticking to the facts reading writing arithmetic and our history actually being history. Yeah. Um, so a, a a a strong Republican uh, uh, position when it comes to education is let's take it out of the centralized government and let's push it down to the states. Let's push it down to the local communities. And through school choice, school choice is a is a Republican idea that uh, is starting to kind of catch on. But you know, it's really based in free market principles as well. But school choice allows the parents to, to be to be more in control of, of of their children's education and allows them to have choices when it comes to what schools are are performing, what schools are not performing, and gives them the ability to move those children away from underperforming schools to performing schools. Those are the kind of solutions that that the Republican Party and and, and my platform are pushing and supporting. That's going to get us uh, away from this this government indoctrination of, of teachings and educational principles and policies that are counter to what the real true uh, strength of what America is. Yeah, CRT is, is definitely not that. It's, it's, it's the wrong direction. It's not American. It's divisive. And it teaches the oppressed versus the oppressor mindset, which has nothing to do with being a united states. Well, freedom freedom of choice when it comes into the education, the, the it really the people that it benefits – are the minority population because they don't they're not stuck with having to keep their child in an in a school that is focused on let's just get them through let's don't give them success let's just get let's give them a high school education no matter what the level of it is and they're failing and but they want them to pass it's it's they're the people that, and in, in more and more, you're seeing our minority communities that are realizing, and they're the ones that push the most for this freedom of choice in these schools, uh, even more so than the rest of the population, because they're beginning to really see what kind of damage is being done by them being forced to stay in these bad schools. Yeah, the, the minority community can definitely benefit from school choice. You know, right now we see that there's a a a, a a gap between, um, you know, higher performing schools and lower performing schools, and it's typically aligned with the social economic um, demographics of, of of the region. And you know, you you can't point to anybody other than yourself when it comes to 
uh, what kind of shape and what kind of conditions the schools are in. Yep. So allow the parents to make a decision on their children. Don't hold them hostage in a low performing school. You know, you, you can't blame anybody but yourself. So that's very sensitive to me. It's a dear topic to me, the, you know, especially the, the black minority community. You know, what we have is we have a group of people that's almost like the gatekeepers of truth. And the Republican principles are truth. School choice is truth. Having a strong law enforcement is truth. Having a, a strong local economy is, is truth. Those things are being held back from the larger community who really needs that to come to them. And a, a candidate like, like myself, I can cut through that. I can speak through that and speak the truth. And I can get through those. Um, one of my favorite economists is, is Thomas Sowell. He calls Absolutely. them race hustlers. Meaning race hustlers are people who want to keep us divided and, and keep us stressed out about racial issues. That's and how they make their money. But that's how they're getting paid. Yes. Exactly. So let's cut through that. Let's bring school choice. Let's bring economic um, opportunity. Let's, let's, let's bring a proud law enforcement to th these communities. They, they want to be safe just like any other community. This whole defund the police narrative, that is, that, that is detrimental to the very community that they're being talked about. That's what you see the race hustlers directly negatively impacting those communities that they say they're trying to protect. Someone yeah. like me, I can speak towards that. I can speak the truth towards that. Well, absolutely. I know my background is 25 years in law enforcement. And the worst thing, or one of the worst things that's going on right now is this cancel out on the police. Because the people that's hurting are the people that need it the most. And these are the people that are the down in the minorities and in the disadvantaged areas that are having the most problem with the crime. Uh, and they want police protection. Yeah, you know, last year, let me give you some 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 direct examples, some clear examples of of how this can go um, off track. Last year, there were a lot of uh, uprisings and and, and uh, protests in the city of Atlanta. Our leadership here in the city of Atlanta, which is the capital of, of Georgia, our leadership turned their backs, in in my opinion, on the police. Absolutely. And and the police did not have anyone protecting them or standing up for them when they were trying to enforce the laws that we put in place and now they're backtracking saying that oh yeah all those uprisings and destructions and and violence that 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 occurred the uptick that occurred was because we don't we, we're not controlling our guns and weapons we have too many guns and weapons in the streets no that's a lie that's a lie that's a lie to try to take away our guns uh which is protected under the second amendment the truth if leadership had been forced our current laws and protected the people, the citizens of, of, of this city, there would not have been an uptick in violence. Absolutely. And they're, and, 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 and they're just using that as a reason to get rid of our weapons. We've got to have people that's bold enough to speak up and call that out. Those, those are lies and it's misinformation, it's disinformation. It's not fair for the, the people of, of, of Atlanta. It's not fair for the people of Georgia. It's not, it's not fair for our, our country. You know, the the weapons, that that's a great you know, thing to, for people to throw out there. Yeah, the weapon may do the may be the instrument of the assault, but the cause of the assault is the person that picks it up and chooses to use it that way. That then the, there's never a gun that's sat on a table that shot anybody. If, if someone wanted to break the law, they would break the law. Absolutely. If someone wanted to harm you, they would harm you. Be it a a vehicle, be it a a, a knife, a bow and arrow, a butter knife. Yeah, whatever it is, they're going to find out a way to hurt you. So, no, a, a, a gun in and of itself, an inanimate object, does not is, is not the cause of the uh, of, of the problem. And taking it's the problem away, is people's heart, people's it, heart. Absolutely, you, you can't. It, it's you a can't mind legislate. Issue. You can't legislate heart issues. Heart issues comes with making sure you have you know stable families, a, a strong faith. Th those are areas of heart. That's how you can improve heart. You know, heart issues, not by legislation. Well, taking the guns away from the people that want to protect themselves that are that are, have them for the reasons that they're that they you know that are the right reasons, that is not going to solve anything. And you cannot take the guns away from criminals. They're going to get a gun. They're going to get a weapon. They're going to get a knife. They're going to get whatever they need when they want it. I mean that you are not going to be able to legislate that out of somebody's hands. No, it'll be a travesty to the to the citizens of that city or that state by removing weapons from, from, from them and not allowing them to protect their lives. Um, 
there was a situation at my own house. I, I have a couple of weapons here in my house. Our alarm went off. Our, our, our dog started barking. And, you know, the first thing I did was I, I reached under my bed and grabbed my weapon, uh, looked at the camera, told my wife to call the police. And now we, we, we feel protected now. Absolutely. That's what that's what America is about, is being able to protect yourself. That's actually, that's that's life. That's, that, that's, that's life. And I believe in the right to life. Well, you cannot rely on everybody else to protect you. Nope. And you sure can't rely on the government to protect you. That is just well, you know, that's I mean, not going to happen. Uh, well, if someone's bringing it to my home, I, I have what three to eleven minutes or so before if the authorities lucky. get here. If you're a lot lucky. can be done in those in those three to eleven minutes. So yeah, I want to be able to protect my my home and my family. Absolutely, and if you, that's if you're lucky on three to eleven, especially nowadays, because police are hesitant to respond because they do not get support. Um. We talked a little bit about cancel culture, and uh, I know that that that's a big one with you. Uh, what is your? Uh, have you had any thoughts about what direction you want to see? How you want to see it taken to, to cancel cancel culture, if you will? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so what, what we say in our campaign is that we want to uncancel America. You see, uh, politicians like Reverend Warnock. He's walking lockstep with the administration, with Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer and and, uh, and Kamala Harris, and they're they're it's feeding into this whole wokeness that's going on in, in America and this this entire council culture. And you know who's paying the price for that? It's people like yeah, you, people. your listeners, people like me, people, small business owners. They're paying the price for the for for, for this council culture. You see what happened with the MLB All Star uh, game being removed from from our state. Yeah, who did it hurt? Small businesses suffer from that. Absolutely. So what we say in our campaign is that let, let's let's uncouncil America. Let's be proud of who we are. Let's 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 move uh, towards free market principles and let's towards unity. And that's really what, like I said earlier, that's what our our candidate our campaign is all about. It's about unity. It's about freedom, opportunity, and American exceptionalism. Well, I don't think you could put it any better as far as the direction and your your whole purpose and focus on your on your campaign. And, you know, I just want to thank you so much for coming on here and sharing all of that information. And I wish you the the best of luck when you go out there as you press the flesh, as they say. And and I look forward to, to having lunch with you at some point. And if people want to get in touch with you or they want to learn more about your campaign, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, sure, Rick. Yes, thank you. Um, go to our website. It's kelvinking.com. That's K-E-L-V-I-N-K-I-N-G.com. And you can access all of our social media platforms. That's, K- that's kelvinking.com. And, uh, yeah, I would love to have lunch with you, Rick, whenever you have a moment. Uh, but it may be a little a little tricky because we're about <laughs> to um, uh, visit all over the state. We want We want to try to hit every county. Um, over the coming uh, weeks and, uh, and months and make sure that our message is, is is shared and that I'm able to to meet and shake hands and kiss babies with as many Georgians as possible because we know that this message, like I said, is very uniting and this message is galvanizing. And this message is a message for all parties. It's not a, just a Republican message. It's a American message. It's a Georgian message. Totally. I, and I have no problem sacrificing my individual desire to sit down with you and chat. <laughs> To you getting out here and meeting the people, more importantly, having them meet you and hear more about it, talk, look at you eye to eye. And as I tell everybody, look at what you've got, look at what the people stand for, listen what their true platform is, what is their experience, what have they actually done. And your record is fantastic. Again, thank you so much for your service. And, you know, we wish you all the luck in the world. Uh, and I just think that it's it's time people step up and do the right thing. Yes, sir. Well, Kelvin, I wholeheartedly agree. Well, thank you very much again for joining us on Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services and in part by Sosby's Garage and Manus Scholarship Fund. Be sure to join us for the live broadcast like you did today every other Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. here on Business Radio X. If you miss the live broadcast, don't worry. You can enjoy the show anytime you want. So can your friends, anybody you know, on by visiting businessradiox.com, selecting the Gwinnett Studio, and clicking on it. The program is also available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, 
really wherever you enjoy your favorite podcast, be sure to hit that subscribe button, the case in point, so that you don't miss any of our future episodes and we can keep you updated on all that's going on around Gwinnett County in the state of Georgia. And thanks so much for my for my guest, Kelvin King, running for the United States Senate here in Georgia. And for our producers, Mike and Amanda, Mike, who's in Japan, playing. And again, I'm Rick Strawn. And remember, at Paradigm Security Services, we cover more than just your assets. <laughs>